we'll be making this paper texture that you see right here. Uh, this node setup that I'll be teaching you guys will be working both in EV as well as cycles. So you can play with the nodes uh, in both these engines and go as per your choice. Right now I'm rendering in cycles, and for the rest of the video, I will mostly be rendering in cycles. So let's jump right in. Let's go, um, get a new file, new general, and delete the default queue. Now add in a plane. Now scale the plane along the Y by about 1.4. That should make it look like paper. Now go into the shading tab. Uh, before we begin with shading, let's just get rid of a couple of things that we won't be using in the tutorial. So get rid of this. So just uh, right click on this border over here, and that should bring this panel right in, and then join areas and then get rid of that and pull this up and for most part of the video I'll be focusing on the shader editor so that you guys can see the nodes perfectly uh, and this is what you're working with right now this is going to the render view and swap the engine to cycles as I said I'll be using that for most of the video now, add in a new material we have the default principle bsdf but we are not going to be using that alone shift a add in a wave texture now the wave texture set the uh, set the scale to 7 and don't worry about the distortion because we are going to be making lines so no distortion and detail roughness you could increase it decrease it uh, play with the values i did not do that for my uh, paper that you saw in the beginning of the video just plug the color to the base color of the principle bsdf now you'll see that it's vertical and not horizontal there's a scene that control T on the node and now you'll have the texture coordinates the mapping nodes right here swap this to object coordinates and now you'll have a much more uh, better node system swap this to the object coordinate and now uh, we'll worry about the orientation of this so let's just change Z rotation by 90 and that should make it horizontal not vertical and next add a color ramp uh, the reason I'm going to be using a color ramp is because you'll see that there's a fall off between the black and the white we want it to be uh, a sharp fall off so we we'll, uh, use a color ramp to define the fall off one way to uh, you uh, change the fall off would be to use the linear interpolation and bring these two closer to each other but I will not be using that instead I will just change the interpolation to constant and then bring the white node all the way here uh, change the position uh, closer to the black will make the lines much thinner so I am going to make this around 0.01 uh, that should make a pretty thin line and the scale works with it and it looks pretty decent uh, yes, you could increase it slightly. Uh, I might as well do that just to make it much uh, clear. Now, uh, duplicate the mapping node and making sure that you have the mapping node selected, just backspace and that should reset the mapping node. And object uh, output should be connected to the vector. And next, add in a separate x, y, z. And plug the vector to the vector. And now, add in a value node. Change the value to 1. We'll uh, uh, see why we need this right uh, in a moment. Add a math node and duplicate this twice and plug each of it into each other. Uh, these two should be plugged to the x value right here and x value right here. Now, where is this value going? Not here, not here. Well, we need to change the operation to compare for both of these nodes and change the operation for this node right here to subtract now you'll have uh, this extra value right here you plug this value into this value and this one into this okay uh, shift control left click and that should uh, give you the output of this subtract node right here it's subtracting same values from each other so you get nothing uh, 
change the epsilon for this one to 0.6 or you can just type the value in uh, and then change the epsilon for this one to point uh, at point this is 1.6 and this is 1.59 and that should give you a pretty thin margin now invert this using an invert node uh, we want the white to be the region with the color and the black to be the region with the other uh, red color that we are going to be using now to change the margins color we just add a color ramp following the invert node and change the black value uh, black uh, uh, tab right here and just increase the value and then change it to any color it doesn't matter as long as you like it uh, increase the value a bit I'm going to go for a red uh, with a shade of pink nothing to saturate it it is okay it is quite a bit saturated but I'm just going to leave it like this not going to worry about it add a mix shader or uh, not mix shader add a mix RGB duplicate that uh, we'll need the second one later on uh, uh, now we'll just view what the principal VSDF is uh, outputting now you'll see that you have the line but it's not uh, opaque enough so adjusting the factor will decide the opacity of that now if i go all the way up in fact you'll say that that's the margin uh, so if you wanted both and yet you wanted the opacity to be uh, opacity to be higher then what you do is just change this to multiply we uh, change the operation to multiply and now you'll have both and the margin will be of 100 percent opacity now why we need this mix mode right here add a shift uh, a and add a noise shader uh, uh, it's noise texture and plug this into the mix node and then change this to multiply and now you see that the entire image has kind of darkened and also has this uh, purple shading and green shading here and there that's the noise shaders uh, noise textures uh, color output let's just make that to black and white because paper shouldn't be having that kind of weird coloring and also add a pump node and this pump node will help us give the roughness over the uh, texture but this certainly is not what we want um, but before that let's just increase roughness all the way and increase the detail to about 5 6 maybe 16 16 will end up consuming a lot of uh, resources but uh, you could do that and i'm going to increase the scale to about 10 and that will make it even more tiny uh, maybe don't increase the scale to 16 because that's going to make it look like rock and increase the scale to maybe 30 and that should make it really fine roughness now you still have it uh, look it looks like sandpaper for now uh, uh, that's because the strength is way too high change it to 0.1 and that should make it much more better if you feel that this is way too less just play with the value and it should get better and if you have set the strength to very low uh, value and still the pumping is too high just decrease distance the distance also affects the bump and there you have it uh, paper in 10 minutes that's it uh, just increase the roughness if you want a really rough paper and input uh, don't uh, go with high roughness and instead put clear code if you're going for a notebook like paper and that's it for this video thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please do like share subscribe and also comment below if you want to um, express your opinions and anything else thank you for watching rcg